6th. And I am, we didn't meet last week because of the holiday. And so I'm just getting caught up on um, what's been going on in the studio. And we have a quilt along going on. As you know, I hope you're following along. I hope you're participating. So I'm going to reveal this week's block. You might have seen this week's block already in a training video or a tutorial video about quilting. So I'm going to show it to you and then tell you where you can see the video. So here is this week's block for the garden party quilt along. Isn't it so cute? I think this is, oh, it's hard to say which one is my favorite, but right now this one is my favorite block. I just love this. So you will be receiving this block uh, pattern and instructions in your email inbox shortly after this video. Um, and I want to talk about this for just a minute, okay? Um, so first of all, what you'll be getting in the in the in the email are you know the template for and instructions for creating the butterfly, and then also the instructions for creating this cute um, on point block. So there are a few other interesting kind of embellishments that I want to talk about. One is um, the way I have quilted it and um, I've done some embroidery and some other little fussy cut elements. So let me just hold this up a little bit closer. Um, first of all, let's talk about the quilting. Um, if you are interested in seeing the video where I demonstrate how I quilt this, um, you can see that on my YouTube channel on collage quilt, my collage quilter YouTube channel. Um, I will also put a link for that in um, this week's, well, there was a link in my Friday Roundup email, and I'll try and put a link in this um, when the block goes out today. So I'll put a link in there so that you can take a look at that. Um, the main thing that I want to point out is that I'm stopping my quilting uh, about three quarters of an inch from the edge of the fabric. So I've quilted it right up until that point. And um, that's so that I can attach the pieces, the blocks together, like I've done right here. So you can see that, that these have been pieced together. And now I'll go back in and just add a few more little um, uh, quilting embellishments. I actually um, might be changing this block out and I'll show you why in a future episode, but um, it's just a nice clean finish. It looks, it works really well. And then in the on the back, um, I've stitched using thick embroidery thread. I just think that's so cute, these two blocks together. So the instructions for attaching the blocks together was sent out in the, there was an update last week. Um, if you have not gotten that, just email me and I will send it to you. But it's the update that includes the entire pattern up and through up through today. Um, and then there are those step-by-step -step photos about how to uh, put the blocks together. So um, back to this block. Uh, so I quilted it and you can watch that video. You can see that I've chosen to use black quilting thread uh, just to kind of make the veins of a butterfly leaf stand out a little bit. And I did use some ink tense pencils as well. You can kind of see um, there's a little bit of shading on this, not a lot. And I didn't, I didn't spend a lot of time on it, but, um, I, you certainly could have more fun with the shading, um, using ink tents. Uh, you can see it a little bit along the edges of the, of the wings. Um, so that's the only, so the rest of the quilting, I selected thread that really blends into the background. So you can't even see the quilting. It's just a meander because I used a green thread. Um, let's see if I can show you. On the back, I use a white thread, so it really blends in. That's kind of how I like to do things. I like to select thread that matches the background, um, unless it's something where I want it you know, I want to create some definition. The other thing that you'll see on this block that I did, I used this beautiful um, velvet embroidery thread. And it's just something that I had in my stash because I collect embroidery thread and buttons and ribbon and whatnot. Amelia just walked in. So hi, ladybug. Hi. Do you want to find the cat? Because I really want to introduce yes. my new kitten to everybody too. 
I don't, he was up here and I don't know where he is. So, okay, thanks. I'm going <laughs> to, I can't wait to show you my new kitty. He's so cute. Okay. So anyway, um, so I began with the quilting here. I did this and actually before I did the quilting, I added this, in, this small, subtle little embellishment with the uh, velvet embroidery thread. So I did his little antenna and then there's a stitch in the ditch kind of around the edge of that. And, and it's just a really subtle touch, but I really like, that's part of what I really like about this um, block. So uh, then, so I did the embroidery, this embroidery embellishment before I quilted it. You can do it either way, like I've done, like I did on the, let's see, there was another block. Oh, the ladybug block. And I used the embroidery actually as the quilting. Um, so then the, the other thing that I did that I really love is I took this fabric that I've used before and I just have a little bit left over and um, I cut it to kind of create a ribbon and I really love the way that looks. And again, just create, just cut out another sort of fun, uh, motif from a piece of fabric that I had and, um, created these little corner embellishments. So I encourage you to have fun with fabric scraps that you have this way, either creating, you know, ribbon pieces or little embellishments. This could easily have been a diamond or a flower or a leaf or, you know, whatever, whatever piece of fabric that you have that you can just kind of see some fun embellishments. Um, and then I just quilted. So the whole thing, you know, has been quilted. Um, Again, I like to match the thread to the background. Um, so this kind of blends in. I don't think you can see it very well. You can see a little bit of the, the quilting that I did on this and a just really subtle quilting on this as well. Um, so all I've done is selected some fun fabric, put some steam -a seam on it and cut it out to have fun with it. So um that is this week's block i'm super super happy with it and i hope you love it too um now one thing that's been going on in my head i know that um people want to buy the fabric that i'm using to create this project and i apologize that i um don't have the fabric available so this is where you're going to just have fun with your fabric selections it really is my goal as I'm going forward and developing as a quilter and an artist to um, to provide fabric uh, that is what I use in the quilt. So fabric that I can sell um, to you as a kit. So that's my goal. It's been difficult because um, I don't know. I'm just I'm behind the eight ball all the time, I feel like. And um, anyway, so that's that. So if you have um, if you have questions, put them in the chat box and I will get to the questions in just a second. Did you find him? Yeah, he's running. I'm okay. Right now. I have a kitten and I want to introduce him, but he's kind of nuts. <laughs> he's going crazy. So I hope we can I hope we can track him down. Um, anyway, that's that. And I just wanted to show you a few. So where we are so far in this project. Oh, we got him. Here he is. This is my baby blue. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. Isn't he just adorable? Mm, look at him. He is so cute. And he's just kind of crazy because he's just like 10, nine weeks old. I love him so much. Um, you probably, if you've been following along at all, you know that I lost my lap, my other old kitty um, last December. And so we wanted a new kitty and here he is. He's a Russian blue kitty, and we call him Blue. Huh? Oh, yes. He's just, he just the cutest little guy, aren't you? <laughs> anyway, okay, so there's my kitty. Okay, we'll let him down and let him go crazy. Um, I dug into my stash of yarn, and it, there's a big, <laughs> a big disaster back there with the yarn. It's so cute. Okay, so what we've done so far then just as a kind of an update is we've got um, we've got these five blocks so it's not too late to join along in the quilt along if you would like to join us 
I will update you for all the blocks that um, have been done so far, but this kind of gives you an idea of what, what, uh, where, where I'm going with the quilt. I think it's going to be super, super cute. So right now I am finishing the quilting on all the blocks um, that I've put out so far and um, even a few more. So the blocks are delivered every Monday in your email inbox. inbox. I haven't sent out this week's. Um, it will be right after this uh, video. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to share with you is I finally got the old lady in the shoe quilt um, bound. Doesn't that look just beautiful? I'm super happy with this. And um, anyway, wanted to share that with you. Uh, one more really exciting, a little piece of exciting news is um, next Monday, on Monday, on June 13th, we're going to have my quilter join us in this live video. Uh, Marianne McClellan will be on to answer your questions and to just kind of learn more about um, how, what her thoughts are about quilting the collage quilt. So she did this one for me and she does lots of quilting for me. I love to, I love to get a quilt sent off to her. I just let her do her thing. I don't give her any instruction. And then she sends it back and it's always like Christmas to open the quilt that she's quilted for me. So I'm anxious to have her um, join us next week. So you can save your long arm quilting questions for her. And I've done that um, domestic, you, you know, the quilting video that's on my YouTube channel, um, demonstrating how I quilted the butterfly block. Okay, so let's get to questions. Um, thank you everybody for joining me. It's always so fun to see people that I recognize and um, people from all over the world. That is so fun for me. So we've got people from Toronto and Brazil and UK, Derbyshire, uh, UK, Montana, um, Alabama, Wales. So uh thank you so much for joining me let me see oh norway hilton head south africa <laughs> so cool okay let's see if we can um i'm just gonna just go through some of the comments and questions so doris said emily i watched your video on quilting and it was so very helpful i do believe that now i'm brave enough to start quilting my completed project starting with the owl good um so one thing i um you know, it has taken me some time. I am by no means an expert quilter, but before I sit down on every, on any project, I always have a tester um, block so that I can make sure that my thread tension is right and that I feel comfortable. So I always recommend doing that. Make sure that you kind of um, run your quilting through a test before you get started on your block. That has given me a lot of confidence. And you can kind of see, I've got a, a block back there. And I actually like to always use a collaged block as well. So I sacrifice one of my collages to be a test block so that I know that it's going to work really well. So that is one recommendation. Always test your projects. Um, and I think what I'll do too is put, uh, oh, I have to sneeze. Oh, the allergies this time of year. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Um, I'll put the information about my thread and, um, my needles and all my little tips about quilting using my Bernina, um, in a blog post. And then I'll, I'll add the link to the Collage Quilter Academy Facebook group. So that blog post about my quilting will be on my, um, on my website, collagequilter.com. Okay, so La Linda just said, hey, Emily, what fun. I'm having trouble with the size of the objects and the scale of each item. The daisy seemed bigger than all the others. Should we increase the size of the bee? Thanks. So there was, um, in this most recent update, the bee pattern that I gave you was rotated the wrong way. And so that's one of the updates so that you should have the correct scale of the bee. Um, even if you used the old scale, I think it will be fine. Um, but the, the scale of each object is accurate in the download. So, um, 
for example, you know, the ladybug, if it's a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger based on your printing. Oh my gosh, that cat is crazy. <laughs> Joe, he's, or Amelia, he's going to tip that thing over. Do you want to get it out? He's in the trash. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. Oh, he's a cute little bug. Okay. So, um, about the scale, there was an error on the B, so that has been fixed, and that was in the most recent um, update that went out last week. So going forward, everything should be accurate for scale, and you shouldn't have to increase or decrease the size. It should be ready to print out at your um, home computer. The one thing that I do recommend is making sure that your the setting for your printer is um there's a setting that you can like click fit to fit to media. Um, don't click that. It needs to just be the full size um, scale. If for some reason you print it slightly smaller, or if you've already created your B using the, uh, the wrong um, orientation, it's fine. It will only be off by a small bit. But I just want to show you the the daisy is pretty big. The largest um, flower that I've got, uh, let's see, it's about 11 inches across. So some of the some of the blocks, some of the flowers will be larger. Um, some of the little insects are going to be smaller. So not everything is the same scale, um, and that's okay. That's kind of by design. Um, so you can kind of see what the scale looks like. That what I've done. Um, you know, that bee is definitely a lot smaller than, or excuse me, that ladybug is definitely a lot smaller than the Gerber daisy. Um, and the butterfly, you know, the shape of it means that it just fits inside and on point block better. And so all of these considerations have, um, you don't need to scale things. That's what I'm trying to get. At. Okay. Uh, let's keep going about questions. So somebody just said, is there a way we can purchase some of the garden blocks, but not all of them? Unfortunately, no. Um, they're only sold as a set right now. And I think that's because um, it's only $39 for 12 blocks. So I feel like um, if I were to separate them, it's a lot of work for me to separate them. And it's such a bargain to have all of them at the same time. So uh, no, they're not sold separately, at least not right now. Okay, let's see here. Um, Janice just asked, can you tell us the brand of fabric you used for the background for the butterfly? It's beautiful. Thank you. Um, I believe this is a free spirit. I don't remember the collection. It's just a green and that, you know, I just selected it simply because I've got little pieces of green in the in the quilt that are hap that is happening, and there was just a you know a smidgen of green in one of the fabrics that I used for the butterfly, and so when I put it on the green fabric, it just popped and looked really good and kind of worked together. So you don't have to use green. Um, you can use blue. You could use a little bit of you know whatever your color um, scheme is coming out to be. Um, this fabric here is an Andover fabric, and it is in my most recent blue bundle. Um, one thing, too, as I've said, I feel really bad that I haven't created this as a kit. I wish I had. Um, unfortunately, I don't have enough fabric to create kits, but going forward, that is going to be my goal, to try and create the quilt first and have all the fabric available so that you can create exactly what I'm doing. Um, but you will see this fabric show up in um, everything that I do. And you'll see it in all of the bundles. Like this green is in my fat is in the green fabric bundle. The blue is in the green fabric bundle. This was in the We Green Beasties bundle. And um, I might put this in the fussy cut bundle. So um, we've got a whole bunch of fabric that's being delivered. We just got a huge shipment and we're gonna be putting out more and more bundles. So I'm really excited about that. Um, let's see here. Um, I'm just looking for any questions. It's great to have you guys here. Thank you so much for commenting and saying hello. 
Um, so somebody just asked, hi, Emily, will more of your blocks be set on point? There will be more blocks set on point. Um, I'm not going to tell you which ones yet, but uh, you'll you'll see them. So, so far, the blocks that we have are we've got just the regular plain old block that's on a background fabric. We have blocks that have um, a border with corner um, corner blocks, and then we've got the, the block set on point here. And the other thing that you can see consistently is the way I've used fabric to create some embellishments. So you can see I've got uh, some Actually, this is the same fabric that I've used here. And you can see that I've cut fabric multiple times to kind of create ribbons. So those are things that I'm just having a lot of fun with as I, as I do this to create embellishments. And of course, we've got the fussy cutting leaves here. So anyway, uh, that's, that's how it's going. Um, we've got more people from Texas, Ohio, Nevada, Brazil. How fun. Um, let's see. Okay, I'm looking for questions. So Maxine just said, is long arm quilting very different from domestic quilting? For example, can you do different things? So great question, Maxine. Um, I have both. I have a long arm machine and I have a domestic machine. Um, they are very different uh, because with a long arm machine, you are so your quilt is on the in on the machine and you're guiding the needle. On my domestic machine, the needle stays still and I move the fabric to quilt it. I have realized that I don't love using my long arm machine. That's just kind of not my thing. I really, really enjoy creating these blocks one by one on my domestic machine. Um, <clears throat> it's more comfortable for me to be able to sit. And I tend to be kind of um, detail oriented. I like to, I just feel like I have a little bit more um, control when it's just right in front of me. So, but you know, everybody's different. Some people really, really love using a long arm machine. And so I've decided anytime I'm going to keep my long arm machine. I was thinking about selling it, but it's great to have for a quilt that I want to bang out quickly for a loved one or something. Um, for, but if, if there's a, if there's a quilt that I feel like needs to be quilted on a long arm machine, I will generally send it off to um, Marion, my quilter who did this quilt back here. Um, and that's just personal preference. The one thing um, that I that I love about my Bernina is that it has the stitch regulator foot. So it allows me to do the free motion quilting. And um, it just, I don't know, it's just a personal preference. So uh, the other thing too about my domestic machine, I can use different stitches and um, I can use embroidery stitches. So I intend to kind of play a little bit more with the embroidery stitches on my Bernina. You'll probably, I'll probably try that with a few more of the blocks that we have coming up. So those are kind of the differences um, <clears throat> with between the long arm and the domestic machine. Okay, um, let's see. So some per somebody just asked, do you recommend any specific thread for quilting your blocks? Yes, um, I generally recommend, um, and I will do a blog post that has more of this information. Um, when I'm using my domestic machine, I am a little less concerned about what thread I'm using. I should probably be more concerned, but generally if I, I just have a whole bunch of old thread and I'll try it, right? Like I said, I would test it and, um, Generally, I do use 100% polyester though when I'm quilting through uh, when I'm quilting through collage because polyester thread is stronger than cotton thread and I don't want to have any breaking. And I feel like that is working really, really well um, because the the quilting on the back just comes out beautiful and um, there are no you know no issues with my with my Bernina. So um, let's see here. Um, 
So I'll give you more information in a blog post about the thread that I'm using. Um, let's see. So somebody just asked, are you going to make a hummingbird block? <laughs> you will see. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. But there are a few more. Basically, I've got six flower blocks and six kind of critter insect blocks that might be found in a garden. So there you have it. Um, okay, let's see. <laughs> um, someone just asked, have you tried putting a collage in a canvas frame? with or without canvas. Members in my quilt guild do this, but I'm not sure it is something I would enjoy. Um, I have not put it in a canvas frame. However, I have framed pieces um, and that is, I do want to make something beautiful to hang on my wall. I like that. Um, this is gonna be a fun quilt that we can pull out in the summertime. Um, Okay, Joan just asked a great question. She said, will you send out how to pack for your retreat? And I mean pack quilting items, fabric, foam board, um, et cetera. So Joan, when did you send that out? I don't know, a month ago, but I can send it. Okay, so our um, first collage quilter retreat is happening next week. It starts on Wednesday the 15th. And Joan, Amelia says she sent out a packing list, but we'll make sure we get that out again this week. Um, let's see. So someone said, how do you line the wings on, how did you do the lines on the butterfly wings? So again, this is just quilting. I used a black thread and it's really quite messy. It's just kind of the doodle stitching that I, that I like. I, I, I don't care if it's perfect. I just, so that's how I did it. And you can see more on, um, my Instagram, which is collage.quilter. And on my YouTube channel, I've got a video about quilting this. Let's see. Oh, and somebody just asked, will you do a video on how to join the blocks? Absolutely. I think that's a great idea. So you can look forward to that coming up soon. Um, let's see. So Lynn just asked, are the fabric embellishments also using SAS too? Yes. So each of these little fabric embellishments that you see on any of the blocks, they also have light steam -a seam two on them. And then I cut them out and just then I can play with them and, and just kind of create something interesting. So yes, I use light steam -a seam two um, on these things as well. Uh, let's see. Someone just said, one of the best things I like about collage is taking your own ideas and making them my own. I'm trying to work out of my stash and not stressing out about making mine match yours, which that is awesome. I love to hear that you're doing that because for me, that's the fun of it too. It's fun for me to access all of the fabric that I have and, and use it in an interesting way. Um, but it's challenging. So I know that some people might not be up to the challenge. If you're up to the challenge, kudos. I'm excited to see what you come up with from fabric that you have in your stash. Um, let's, let's see. Lynn just also asked, the squares on the Gerber Daisy, let's see, are the stripes and corner blocks sass? Yes. So on the Gerber, let me show you this. So this came out last Monday, right? This came out on Memorial Day. Um, so this is, these are just fabric pieces that I've cut out and yeah, applied, um, light steam -a seam two to the back. Same thing with this. This was a piece of striped fabric. And then this little corner here is, and you can see I've used kind of the same fabric over and over. So these little corner pieces come from this fabric and these little corner block pieces come from this fabric that I have. Um, so you may be able to to get if you have a most a more recent blue fabric bundle this might be in your blue fabric bundle so those are all um they're not pieced it is um collaged or yeah collaged onto the fabric so it's kind of a kind of an interesting way to use um fabric i've just had a ton of fun with that um let's see 
Okay, so Sharon just said, I watched the Instagram video showing you quilting this. What I didn't see um, was you quilting the blue border. Uh, let me show you. Yeah, I didn't I, I didn't show the blue border. I think um, it just got kind of boring. <laughs> uh, so it's just meandered. This is just a meander stitch. And if you recall on the video, I did mark the edges all the way around with um, three quarters of an inch with chalk so that I knew to stop my quilting there. Um, the chalk has kind of worn off, but so the quilting goes all the way to the edge. And this is just a, just an up and down meander. You know what I think it might be kind of helpful is if I were to just draw this out and so that you can see it because it's so hard to see using the matching thread. Um, and then this is a meander. Um, this is kind of a circular thing and this is just back and forth. So I think that would be really easy for me to do. I'd be happy to do it. I will sketch something out so that you can see how I've quilted this. Um, so I hope that answers your question, Sharon. Okay, um, somebody just said, um, I was hoping you were going to be a presenter at Garden of Quilts in September at the Lehigh Thanksgiving show. Um, I'm not sure that I, now she says, I'm not sure I want to go. Any thoughts on that quilt show? You know, here's the funny thing. Um, <laughs> I kind of, I, I kind of fly under the radar in Utah. I don't think very many people know who I am in Utah. And I don't know about a lot of stuff that happens. I mean, I know that show goes on, but I don't know. I never get information sent to me. I need to seek that out. I would love to present. I would love to put up a quilt in that show. I just don't know much about it. And I'm kind of in my own little world. I don't, I don't really know anything about it. Um, so I, I can't really speak to it. I, it sounds awesome. I would like to do it. Um, I haven't been invited to present at that show, so don't plan on that, but maybe I'll put a quilt in it. I don't know. And I and I do want to go myself. I think it would be really fun to see. It's a great idea, this beautiful garden that's here in Lehigh. Um, and the idea of quilts in the garden sounds just awesome. So maybe I'll see you there. I'll let you know what I find out about it. I really need to look into it some more. Um, okay, we've got someone from Portugal too. Welcome. Uh, let's see. So someone just asked, can I see the stitching on the back? So again, it's difficult to see. Um, here's the, there, there it is upright. There you can kind of see the stitching. And again, I think I'll do a little, I'll do a little drawing to help you see it. And someone said a dragonfly, please. Well, you might be very happy. So we've had a request for a dragonfly and a hummingbird. Those are really good guesses for what kind of critter you might find in, um, in a garden, right? Okay. Let's see here. Um, okay. I will do a video about joining the blocks together. That's a great idea. Um, CK just asked, will the little old lady in the shoe eventually be a download pattern? No, this quilt is a foundation panel and therefore it will not be a downloadable. The things that make good downloads are the parchment pressing patterns and those patterns that are a little bit smaller. This is a pretty large quilt and it's a foundation panel, which means um, when you purchase the pattern, there's a 100% cotton foundation panel that has the design printed in gray tones on it. And those gray tones just provide um, a guide for your fabric selection and fabric placement. So that's too hard, too difficult to turn into a download. So I am sorry about that. Um, let's see here. So Anne just asked a question. Do you use a lot of steam? Heck yes. <laughs> I Before I quilt something like this, I use a ton of steam. Steam is what is going to kind of dissipate or break down the temporary layer in the steam seam. That's why it's called steam -a seam. Um, we need to use a ton of steam in this and then that softens it up. Um, 
Okay, let's see. Oh, somebody just asked, will you show the quilt behind you? This is the quilt that you're referring to. This is the little old lady in the shoe. Let me um, I, let me know if you want to see it up close. It has little children in it um, who are playing around near their house, which happens to be a shoe sitting in a garden. So that's the quilt. Um, Okay, someone just said, I am thinking about adding charms to some of the blocks, i.e. small metal bees, etc. My thoughts, um, if, give it a try. You know, if, if you don't, if you aren't happy with it, um, you can always clip them off. But I think that might be kind of fun. Um, so Anne just said, please, can your quilt sketching be included in the weekly send outs of patterns? That's a great idea. So maybe I can add that. Um, my quilting design, um, I can add that to this, to this block because it's not quite ready to send out. So I'll get that done. Um, all right. So those are the only comments and questions that I see. Thank you so much, everybody, for your kind, um, suggestions and your kind comments and for joining me today. I really look forward to our weekly visits and next week again, I want to remind you to be here to see, um, to meet Mary McClellan, my long arm quilter. And she is a really beautiful person. I am so excited to have her. Um, Donna just asked a, a question, just purchased the garden party last week. Will I get a new design this week? Yes, you will. So Donna, if you purchased it last week, um, anybody that purchases anything up until the moment that I update the product will receive everything um, in their email inbox. So, and Barbara, yes, I am looking forward to seeing you next week at the retreat. Okay, folks, have a lovely week and I will talk to you again soon. Goodbye.